Hello, I'm Bosco Rico. Today, I'm talking about how to read optical aberration data of telescope. So far, I have taken up this theme several times. However, they were all in Japanese, so this time, I'm speaking in English. Now, I'm watching the website, this telescope that I use for the sample. Its name, SD103S or SD103S, Reflecting Telescope of Vixen. I don't know which way of calling for foreigners. However, I call it SD103S in this movie because I cannot roll my tongue well, uh, when I use 103. And this is a new model for connecting with full-frame digital cameras. And then, it is a longitudinal graph of aberration. The lower right one is the graph of SD103S. From this graph, we can read two aberrations. One is chromatic aberration, and the other is spherical aberration. So, I'll explain these two. The first one is chromatic aberration. You know, reflecting telescope collects light with objective lens. But in reality, the light passing through the lens has a different refractive index for each wavelength. So, with just one lens, the focal points are separated for each wavelength. To solve this problem, the objective lens combines multiple lenses made of different materials. So, SD103S is also made of two different lenses. In particular, Ohara FPL53 is an excellent material that removes aberrations for this telescope. But front lens of back one, I don't know which lens is made by this material. By the way, what is troubling with chromatic aberration? Also, there are two types, axial aberration and transverse aberration. First one, axial aberration is most disliked by us. Actually, the focal point is different for each wavelength. If we focus on the most visible wavelength, other colors are out of focus. Especially, the blue or purple is not in focus. In Japan, we call this Aohalo. Aohalo means blue rings. Very rarely, the problem of Akahalo means red ring also arises. In passing, Akahalo occurs with overcorrection. But it can also appear with a telescope without chromatic aberration. Since red ray has a long wavelength, it turned up with cameras that often take in infrared rays. Next one, transverse aberration. The fact that the focal length is different for each wavelength means that the magnification differs for each color, isn't it? So, even if each of the colors are collected in the center of field, they shift at a point away from center. This problem is particularly disliked by astrophotographers. Regarding the deviation degree, sometimes the blue is big and sometimes the red is big. Taking the Takahashi telescope as an example, when with reduce a lens, red image tends to get bigger. On the contrary, when with extender lens, blue image tends to get bigger. However, in the case of Takahashi, the slip phase is very small, so we hardly care about it. Okay, let's get back on track. Although the SD103S accurately corrects aberration with two lenses, just a few deviations will appear. Furthermore, this gap also depends on the position of the light entering the lens. And many of reflecting telescopes using two lenses the purple light coming from around the lens is greatly shifted. Thus, even if the same color deviates from the focal point depending on the entering position, that is called spherical aberration. Spherical aberration occurs because the surface of the lens is spherical. And this can be alleviated by using multiple lenses like chromatic aberration. However, since purple light is hard to see, many reflecting telescopes do not be corrected it so much. In other words, there are limits to the correction capability with two lenses. 
In order to further correct it, the telescope requires even more lenses, but its price will also increase. Since SD-103S is targeted at light users, it is necessary to suppress the price. Well, I explained chromatic aberration and spherical aberration so far. If such a gap is represented in the longitudinal graph, it would look like this. The vertical axis shows the distance from the center, and the horizontal axis represents the position of the focal point. In this figure, the purple light entering from near the center is in focus at close to the objective lens. However, even in the same purple color, entering from the periphery focuses at a more distant point. And this graph exactly shows its state for each wavelength. Well, let's read optical performance of the telescope using this graph. This time, I would like to compare SD-103S with other telescopes solding in Japan. Telescopes that I want to compare are apochromous type telescopes using two objective lenses as SD-103S. Specifically, FC-100D Takahashi, 107FL Bog, and Capri 102ED Kasai Trading are on sale now. However, Bog does not prepare ablation graph for its product. Those products are very popular because they can be customized. But I cannot compare with others, so I have never considered purchasing. For this reason, I'll compare them except Bog. First, I'll unify the format so that the graphs of these products can be easily compared. Of course, I'll show you the rewriting process so that there is no injustice. First, SD-103S. Second, FC-100D. Final, Capri-102ED. Okay, let's compare. At the first, Vixen vs. Takahashi. I place the graph of SD-103 to the left and FC-100DL to the right. Let's focus on yellow, red, and green curves. Even if we compare these, they are all similar. So, both have very high performance. Next, let's focus on the curve of blue and purple. Curves of FC-100DL is closer to zero, isn't it? This means that FC-100DL has less blue halo. FC-100DL is one of the highest performance telescopes among others. By the way, Takahashi has another type of telescope similar to this one. It is a little short type such as FC-100DF or DC. However, Takahashi has not made public its diagram. But Takahashi said that FC-100DL has reduced blue halo by 40% over FC-100DF. From this world, we can imagine the aberration diagram of FC-100DF. And this is the estimation graph of FC-100DF. Including the blue halo by 40%, its performance will be almost the same as SD-103S. From the viewpoint of optical aberration, there is no difference between these two telescopes. So, we can find out that Vixen used Ohara FPL53 to bring out the same performance as Fluorlight. Well, next is the fight with Capri. However, Capri's aberration diagram is something insufficient. We can only see three colors. Actually, from this graph, the most important color is missing. That is a purple line. In addition, the line that looks green is also different. By all right, it must be colored yellow. Immediately, we can understand why such cheating is being done. Well, this is a comparison between SD-103S and Capri-102ED. Capri has a very bent yellow line. 
This indicates that spherical aberration of Capri is very large. The yellow line is very visible, so it must be solid. Similarly, red light of Capri also has large spherical aberration. Also, where did the green and purple line go? We can infer this question using this graph. This is a graph of ED102S, which is a node product of Vixen, and it was sold until 2005. We can find that Capri's graph is exactly like this, so the green and purple lines can be edited like this too. Because the blue line of Capri is to the plus side, the purple line may be worse. In this way, by erasing the outer two lines, they are showing less aberration. I don't know how much Takasai Trading has the intention of deceiving customers. However, we also want to avoid being deceived by reading the graph correctly. Okay, let's finish it up for today. Do you understand how to see aberration diagrams so far? This time, it was about longitudinal graph. So I'd like to explain spot diagram in the future. Thank you for watching. See you again.